Howdy partner. So you want to learn how to replace a Hayward temperature sensor? Well, you're in luck. I'm going to show you today. Today, we're going to run through a quick how-to video on replacing your temperature sensor on your Hayward pool equipment. If you haven't already, please go to the bottom right and hit that subscribe button and you can check out all of our pool series videos that give you helpful tips and tricks on maintaining a pool. So I'm just an average guy, not a pool repairman, but I can do these projects and so can you. So looking at this, this temperature sensor works on water, air, solar. They're all pretty generic. And this one is also uh, says that it works for Aqualogic, ProLogic, OmniLogic, all the Hayward products. I'll link this in. I just bought it on Amazon, but I'll put it in the description in case you need to check it out. So the first thing you're going to see is why do you need to replace your temperature sensor? Well, the sensor on our pool is saying the pool is 22 degrees Fahrenheit. It was showing negative two the other day and the pool's in the 80s. So it's totally broken. We want to get that fixed so that everything is operating properly, reading properly, all that stuff. So walk you through real quick how to do this. Not a very complicated procedure. The first thing you want to do is locate your temperature sensor. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over to find it's going to be clamped onto one of your pipes and it's going to be just a little black thing here and what this is this if it's an outside air sensor it might just be hanging over by your pool uh, control panel but if it's checking the water it's going to be in here there's a hole drilled and it's in there and it's clamped on with a pipe and there's a washer so we'll talk about how to get that replaced in just a second once you find it you want to find this brown wire that's attached and you've got to trace it back so we've already traced it back all the way to our main control panel and it's this wire right here so now that you've traced it back you've got to go over and turn off all your power make sure you've killed all your power make sure you hit all your circuit breakers you've got and just be really really safe to make sure no one gets shocked because this is high voltage you're going to unplug your salt cell if you have a salt cell and then you're going to go ahead and remove the cover panel making sure everything is safe and turned off to your to your uh, control panel. They're gonna be a little different. This one's got two screws on the top. I already took one out. Don't lose those screws. So this will tilt out and it comes up. And you see you have a whole lot of wires in here. If you have a non-contact uh, voltometer or any type of voltometer, you can check. Make sure you don't have any more power anywhere, which I already checked it. I'm very sure all the power is dead. So we're gonna take this wire that we traced from that temperature sensor we're going to come up here and if you zoom in real close you'll see that it says in the back that it says pool spa sensor and then below that says air sensor so it's the two top wires right here are what goes to that so you want to take a really really tiny screwdriver and you're going to unscrew these two screws to loosen up this red and this black wire I'm gonna leave them in right now because I wanna first start over with the sensor. So stay tuned, we're gonna get that taken out. So when you're ready to go ahead and remove this, you wanna try to release some pressure from your valves. And then if you have anywhere to close off your water, I'm gonna take my flush valve and move it to the closed position. You wanna try to do that. Now that's gonna stop the pressure, but you don't want all the water running out. When you take this out, you're gonna have a little bit of water come out. So you wanna prep your Prep your, uh, your, your piece here, your temperature sensor. And I like to use a little bit of this lube tube, which is just a, a lubricant that helps to really uh, make everything nice and waterproof. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of that and run it along this O-ring here to make sure we get a real good waterproof seal. Okay. So. Once we've done that, then we're going to come here and we're going to loosen the O-ring that is currently in place. So I'm going to loosen this up. This one's already been replaced once and you see they actually glued a piece of PVC over the previous hole. It was probably a different size component, but this one looks like an exact replacement. So we shouldn't have to do that. And you can probably reuse this clamp if you'd like to. So now that we've got that removed, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull it out and I expect water to come out. So I wanna be ready with the new one to go ahead and throw it on and get it clamped up. 
So let me just get this new one ready. And we're gonna loosen this up just a tad more. A little water's already dripping because we've released the tension. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this one out. Okay, good, we don't have much water coming out. You see, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna have to remove this clamp more. So we're gonna go ahead and get this old one off. All right, gotta move it more. We're free. You take the new one, make sure it's clean. You've got that lubricant on it. You're gonna work it up through your O-ring. You can use the new O-ring or the old one, it's up to you. And you wanna plug this in. And once you plug it in there, then you're gonna put the new, you're gonna clamp this down. And you don't wanna over tighten it, just hand tighten it in there to where it gets a good seal against the pipe. So we're just gonna keep on getting it in there. Now we're gonna check to make sure it's not dripping and then we'll run the wires back, stay tuned. Okay, so we've run this wire all back. Now this original one had a red and a black. We've got a red and a white, so we're just gonna use the black as the white but you want to unscrew the two terminals here at the top. You're going to take those out. And then if you need to, you might need to strip a little more wire off the end to see how you can get it in there. So we have the red on top. I want to go ahead and put that back in there. And then the white at the bottom. We're going to tighten it up and we're good to go. Okay, we've gotten the control panel Cover back up, replugged in our salt cell, turn on some of the breakers. Now we're gonna turn on the rest of them. It will be the moment of truth to see if this new temperature gauge is working. So let's go on over default menu and we will check. It says pool temp 80 degrees, which means the new temperature here is 76. The new temperature is working. So that was an easy fix. Let's just check the new connection. We're under full pressure now, and there is no water coming out of here. So I think we're in good shape. Stay tuned. Okay, well, thanks for tuning in to another Mr. Greg's How To, especially our pool series. Again, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions at all, please go ahead and put them in the comment box. That's a pretty easy repair, but hopefully we'll walk it through to give you a little bit of confidence that you can definitely accomplish that. So again, thanks for watching. And remember, if I can do this, you can too.